Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Movie Snips. Today we're going to be focusing on the iconic spinners of Blade Runner. Many may wonder how exactly do spinners function and what technology do these flying vehicles use to levitate off the ground and remain airborne. A spinner can be driven as a ground-based vehicle, take off vertically, hover, and cruise using jet propulsion, much like the vertical takeoff and landing VTOL aircraft currently in use today. Blade Runner spinners were envisioned and conceptualized by American industrial designer and neo-futurist concept artist Sid Mead, appearing in the original Blade Runner movie, the 1999 futuristic action movie Soldier, the Blade Runner video game of 1997, as well as in the Blade Run in, in, in Blade Runner 2049. The concept of the spinner has also been expanded upon in films such as Back to the Future 2, The Fifth Element, and the Star Wars prequel trilogy, most notably in Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. In one of the scenes from the movie Soldier starring Kurt Russell, the remains of an outdated spinner can be seen lying in a heap of trash on waste disposal planet Arcadia 234. These films propagate the shared vision of flying cars, and people use spinners like traditional cars a more advanced substitute for helicopters and VTOL jets, if you will. What method of propulsion do spinners use to get airborne? According to Sid Mead, spinners are aerodynes, or vehicles which direct air downward to create lift. This makes for a more interesting explanation. However, if you go according to the explanation offered by the Blade Runner press kits, spinners use a combination of three methods of propulsion conventional internal combustion, jet power, and anti-gravity technology. Spinners have rotating front wheel joints that allow the wheels to fold inwards into a horizontal position while in flight, and then back into a vertical position while being driven on the ground. Their rear wheels remain in a fixed position. In the Blade Runner movies, spinners are used extensively by the police to patrol and survey the population. It is clear that despite restrictions imposed on the general public, wealthy people could acquire spinner licenses. In the films, we're only shown spinners the size of regular coupes and sedans. However, it is likely that larger varieties also exist, such as spinner trucks, vans, and buses. We also see a number of floating blimp-like vehicles in the first Blade Runner movie, with billboard adver advertisements for the off-world colonies. So in the original Blade Runner film, Deckard rides in a spinner with Gaff, but we don't actually see him operate a spinner. Deckard drives a regular police car that can't fly. The spinner in the first movie is rounder with softer contours, whereas the spinner used by Replicant K in the sequel movie is more angular and industrial looking. The spinner flown by Officer K was branded as a Peugeot as, as part of a marketing deal that later resulted in a lawsuit between French auto manufacturer Peugeot and Alcon Entertainment. We don't see spinners fire weaponry in the first film, but in the second film, K's spinner is armed with high caliber guns, and it's clearly ev evident that spinners in the sequel film can be armed with much more, with, with more powerful weapons, such as uh, missiles if, if needed. Uh, spinners in the 2049 movie also ca carry armed drones that can be deployed for reconnaissance or attack purposes. The dashboard consoles of most spinners are highly advanced and display altitude, speed, approach vector, and also incorporate a radar which can be used to track other airborne vehicles in the pilot's vicinity. Most of the spinners shown in the Blade Runner movies have room for just two people, but the Wallace Corporation spinner which Replicant Love uses to transport Deckard to the spaceport clearly has room for at least six passengers. Mega corporations such as the Tyrell Corporation and the Wallace Corporation probably made extensive use of spinners both on, both on Earth and in the off-world colonies. The spinner concept is definitely an interesting one to explore, especially since we're about to enter a new age of aerial transport with the introduction of electrical VTOLs and rotor-powered air taxis. Given that anti-gravity propulsion is not on the immediate horizon and we are unlikely to see spinners in the near future, are there any hopes for flying cars that can operate from rooftops by 2049? Interestingly, it's, interestingly these, these past couple of years have proven to be an exciting time in the, fear, in, in the field of flying cars, as a plethora of objects are underway to create small one or two seat autonomous air taxis for urban commutes. Ignoring the anti-gravity aspect of the matter, there are some commonalities between these efforts and the spinners, uh, they're small, not particularly fast and are limited in range to an urban environment. 
These emerging aircraft are a fusion of several noticeable technological trends, including distributed electric propulsion, as well as the improvements in batteries and advancements in artificial intelligence that have been fueling the self-driving car industry. Most bear a closer resemblance to scaled up hobby drones than to conventional helicopters. Their lift typically comes from multiple rotors, varying from a pair of large ducted fans to 18 smaller rotors. These electrical vertical takeoff and landing EV tall aircraft fall under the category of what the aer aerospace industry calls transformative vertical flight, TVF. Some of the proposed designs are similar to the Blade Runner spinners in that they are rotable, meaning they can drive on the ground as well as fly in the air. The EV tolls have several key advantages over traditional helicopters. By using high efficiency electric motors connected to a sophisticated computer, they do away with the heavy gearboxes, drive shafts, and control systems of conventional helicopters. A sizable percentage of the helicopter's rotor disc near the rotor hub produces very little lift because of its low rotational velocity compared with the blade tips. Multiple rotor systems can produce more lift within a smaller area. These factors allow batteries to power the eVTOL rather than a heavy fuel combustion power plant. As a result, these light aircraft do not need significantly reinforced rooftop landing sites and pose far less of a hazard to people or structures in the rare event of an accident. So I hope you enjoyed watching my video today. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And please check out my channel for more lore videos.